It is a great honour to be awarded the ESPID PIDJ award this year, which was a very welcome surprise in my email inbox. And I would like to briefly present the paper we published in PIDJ uh, in, in December last year. I have nothing to disclose. So just a bit of background, uh, rotavirus is the leading cause of childhood diarrheal deaths. Uh, 215,000 children die each year from rotavirus. And fortunately, we have very good tools at our disposal, uh, rotavirus vaccines. Uh, they've had enormous impact. However, they come with a big caveat, and that is this, that their efficacy is much lower in developing countries than in uh, high income countries. And uh, essentially they are not having nearly as big an impact as uh, they could or they should in the countries that arguably need them most. This is not a new phenomenon, this also, this vaccine efficacy gap applies to other oral vaccines such as polio, cholera, typhoid vaccines. And it doesn't interestingly apply to parental vaccines uh, and so it begs the question as to whether or not the intestinal milieu through which an oral vaccine transits is, is maybe a key determinant. We know that intestinal pathogen carriage, diarrhea, enteropathies and dysbiosis of, of the microbiome are all more likely to occur in resourceful settings. And we further hypothesize that a broader intervention that improves intestinal health uh, could increase oral vaccine take, something such as water sanitation and hygiene. And to study this in, in more detail, we capitalized on the SHINE trial to test this hypothesis. We brief, briefly, the SHINE trial was a two by two factorial trial in rural Zimbabwe, testing the independent and combined effects of two interventions, improved infant feeding and improved water sanitation and hygiene, uh, which I will refer to as WASH. And the primary outcomes of the trial were stunting and anemia measured at 18 months of age. The nutritional interventions actually didn't kick in until six months of age, which meant that we were able to collapse down the four arms of the, uh, of the trial into two arms, a non-wash and a wash arm. This increased our statistical power. Another crucial factor uh, helping us to conduct the study was the timely nationwide introduction in Zimbabwe of rotavirus vaccine in 2014. This was given at six and 10 weeks of age. And this vaccination was undertaken at local clinics. It was not overseen by the trial, but we did encourage our staff in the trial, encourage vaccination and captured immunization status, um, immunization histories at the postnatal visits. And among a representative sample of infants in each of the four arms of the trial, we collected specimens longitudinally and with the blood draws at a one month of age, postnatal and three months, we were able to determine our primary outcome, which was seroconversion, defined as a rise in rotavirus vaccine IgA from less than 20 to greater than 20. And what did we find from comparison of trial arms? We found that seroconversion rates were overall were low, but among the infants in the wash arms, they had increased rates of seroconversion. Those are the light blue boxes compared to infants in the non-wash arms. Those are the red boxes. This was the case for our primary outcome, rotavirus vaccine seroconversion, but also for secondary outcomes such as vaccine seropositivity and vaccine titer. And um, it begged the question, which of the intestinal factors, if any, were driving this effect? So uh, again, a representative sample of infants had stool specimens collected and we were able to test our hypothesis further by um, testing these stools using TACMAN array cards um, uh, looking at enteropathogens uh, in these stools and uh, these TACMAN array cards uh, compartmentalize qPCR assays for 29 different enteric pathogens and we detection was cat categorized yes or no based on a qPCR cycle threshold of less than 35. What was our hypothesis? It was that enteropathogen carriage is associated with reduced rotavirus vaccine immunogenicity. And secondary to that, that improving water sanitation and hygiene can reduce enteropathogen carriage. Our characteristics across uh, the two groups of, of infants and across the infants that were enrolled and not enrolled were broadly similar. 
our baseline characteristics and 440 infants in total were included in this sub-study. We found that enteric pathogens were very prevalent um, uh, and this was around the time of rotavirus vaccine receipt, so at six to ten weeks of age. Almost 60% of infants had at least one pathogen detected and in a quarter of infants they had two or more pathogens detected. Which pathogens were most common? Well, among the bacteria, Entera agrotiv E. coli was the most commonly detected, uh, and followed by atypical enteropathogenic E. coli, and then Campylobacter. Uh, for the viruses, non-polio enterovirus was the most prevalent, uh, followed by norovirus and adenovirus. And what did we find? Well, this was our main question, but um, among uh, comparing associations between individual pathogens and rotavirus vaccine immunogenicity, there were no associations. And you can see this was both for the primary outcome, rotavirus vaccine seroconversion, the risk ratios here are presented uh, in, in purple, uh, or for the secondary outcome, rotavirus vaccine seropositivity. And that's the, uh, the brown bars. Similarly, when we grouped pathogens together, according to bacteria, viruses, and parasites, there were also no uh, obvious associations. And we did correct for multiple association testing. And our secondary question, question was about whether or not there was any impact of the WASH intervention on enteric pathogens. And we did not see any effect of WASH on enteropathogen carriage at this age. And in a larger study looking at pathogens detected at uh, older ages as well, including at six months and at 12 months of age, there was also no impact of the WASH intervention that's been published elsewhere. So what can we conclude from this study? Well, very importantly, rates of seroconversion to rotavirus vaccine were very low in rural Zimbabwe, and that's consistent with what we know also from the efficacy data. The WASH intervention did, however, boost rotavirus vaccine immunogenicity among this group of children. However, there were no clear associations between enteric pathogens and rotavirus vaccine immunogenicity. And similarly, the WASH intervention had no impact on uh, reducing enteric infections. Finally, I would like to thank this fantastic group of people in Zimbabwe, who I spent much of my PhD working with, and who, who provided a continued source of enthusiasm and support to me. Uh, to uh, a number of collaborators, um, particularly in the US at the University of Vermont, who helped me develop the immunogenicity assay uh, out in Zimbabwe, uh, and also the, the team at the University of Virginia, led by Eric Hout, who uh, led on the TACMAN array cards. Uh, finally, my supervisor, Andy Prendergast, um, at Queen Mary and also Paul Kelly uh, for, for their uh, fantastic guidance to me. Thank you very much.